Recently, one of my relatives posted on Facebook a picture of him holding his newborn son, Nathan. The picture was taken 37 years ago, but he was marking the anniversary of Nathan's birth, a joyous day for him, but in some ways also marking the reality that Nathan's no longer with him and with us. Nathan died as a young adult when he was a student at Valparaiso University. I recall when I learned the news, even though uh, we actually hadn't even met distant relatives, but I knew of him and I, I knew his family and I was his age. And his death was sudden and shocking and difficult and hard and just beyond words. And as I watched the comments roll in under Barry's photo of this beautiful picture of him and his son, I was just struck by the, the people who were commenting that they share his grief. And as he later said, a lot of those folks who had noted this day in the comments on his Facebook page were part of the same club that he was a club that no parent ever wants to be a part of, the club of those who have lost a child. I can't imagine. In our community here in Chisago Lakes, we have recently lost a child. Kaylee Rambo was a gift to all who knew and loved her. And today, at this time, Throughout this day, family and friends have been gathering around her parents who are unfortunately now a part of this terrible club. And it raises a lot of questions for us, I'm sure, especially for her peers. And it also raises a lot of grief. All of us have been, I think, encountering grief in some form or fashion in these months of pandemic. Some of that grief is literally wrapped up in the death of someone we love. And grieving right now, the death of loved ones in this time is just different. Dare I even say weird and odd and uncomfortable. And it's harder, I think in a lot of ways. Grief is hard no matter what, death is hard no matter what, but right now when we're called to be physically apart from each other, how do we grieve with one another is a question I think many are asking. But along with the grief around death, literal death, I think there's also grief for a lot of people right now around loss that's happened in other ways. There's loss wrapped up in a job that we maybe loved going to or that we depended on for our financial well-being and we don't have it. There's loss wrapped up in school not looking the same at the end of the year and school not looking the same as we start a new year. There's loss wrapped up in our mobility to just be out and about as freely as we once were, where now we might intentionally be isolated or at least cautious in a way we didn't have to be before. There's loss wrapped up in not being able to gather in the ways that we once did. Birthday parties where any and all were invited and masks weren't even thought of. Gathering with family and friends for reunions and the kind of things we would normally do in the summer or traveling places that we have been planning and saving for and for our own reasons and the reasons of that around us, we had to break those plans. Or even gathering as we used to do at church, whether it's around food and fellowship or worship or in our indoor space, there's loss wrapped up in a lot of this for a lot of us. And grief is real. And I think right now it is palpable. Huber Ross, a woman who has done a lot of work in the area of grief, says there's five stages that we tend to move in and through. And I think while she was writing specifically around death, physical death, 
there are ways that this translates into other parts of our lives. There's the, the stage of denial, which is sometimes the most immediate of those stages where we want to avoid what has happened. We feel confused. There's just shock and fear that's shaking the ground on which we walk. There's the stage of anger where we move into this place where we are just so ticked off at what has happened to us. We feel frustrated, irritated, anxious, and kind of coming down that slope, we find ourselves in this place of bargaining, struggling to find meaning, reaching out to others, telling one's story, kind of this back and forth, this pull and this push. We're trying to find our way out, but we're still really wrapped up in the hard emotions of this. Sometimes we then move into this place of depression where we are just so overwhelmed and helpless. We feel hostility within ourselves. We just want to flee from all of it. And eventually we come to this place of acceptance. This place where we're starting to explore our options. We're putting this new plan into place and we're finding our way forward. But here's the thing about those five stages of grief. I don't think it's just this you know, like fluid one way thing. And we end up here at that fifth stage of acceptance and we're just great moving forward. Those stages, they're permeable. They kind of ebb and flow. And while there might be moments of this rhythm, I think sometimes we might find ourselves back at a stage we didn't see coming. I want us to recognize that it's okay to feel this way. It is more than okay to acknowledge the reality of these stages of grief that we are walking in right now. And in fact, I think there's power in doing so. I think healing comes through naming what hurts. Healing comes through naming what is hard. Healing comes by naming where it hits our heart. If you're watching this right now, and if you have lived through any of these last six months, and if you have lived through your own experiences of hardship and heartache that normal life offers in the midst of these last six months, but are only compounded upon by being in this time of COVID, I want you to know that if there's grief wrapped up in that for you, that's okay. In fact, I would say that's normal. And if you are in a place of intense grief that has to do with the loss, with the death of someone that you deeply love, you are heard and your grief is more than valid. And those stages that you're moving through, whether you're over here or over there or somewhere in between, God's in it with you. It's in moments like these that we turn to different types of scriptures that might say something about where we're at from this side of the spectrum to that side of the spectrum. Like Psalm 147, where we're told that God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. You might be in a place where you are clinging to that scripture. You're clinging to that hope of God healing those wounds. Or you could be in a place of Psalm 102. Hear my prayer, O Lord, let my cry come before you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. You might be angry and upset and just done right now with God and with grief. Wherever you are on that line, Christ is with you. And Christ can take it. Christ can take our disappointment, our sense of loss, our need to belong and to be heard. Christ can take our broken heart and the anger that can sometimes spew from that. Christ can take it. And he's there with us. He sits with us in the muck and in the mud and in the mess. He doesn't leave. Even though it seems, sometimes feels like it, he doesn't leave. 
but he's right there in those stages of grief. As they move forward and sometimes take a few steps back and move forward and sometimes take a few steps back, God promises to walk with us. And in time, heals that broken heart that we have and works to bind up our wounds. They turn into scars, eventually. They tell a story, Lord knows. Sometimes they make us a part of a club we never dreamed nor wanted. But our prayer is that even in those places, and even in that brokenness, we find the communion of the saints around us, the church today, the heavenly church of those who have gone before, and the grace of God within. Oh.